Barry Sanders. Um, I'm a long suffering Lions fan. I grew up in Detroit, um, cursed with that affliction. Um, and he is the best running back to ever play football. And I believe that, uh, that's, that, I mean, that's the easy, easy answer for me. Um, even apart from anybody or anything else. Um, yeah, number one, uh, would be number 20, Barry Sanders, a hundred percent, hundred percent, hundred percent. Um, in terms of the Miami Hurricanes, I'm going to have to stick with another running back and go Edward and James, I think. Um, or, yeah, yeah, you know, like that that class or those couple of classes. Like you can pick out any of those names, you know. Um, Santana Moss, because he graduated in 2000, uh, so he wasn't on the championship team in 01. Uh, you know, Reggie Wayne, same thing. Uh, Edward and James was a little bit before them, you know. Um, <clears throat> I would say those, those three guys would probably be at the top of the rotation for me uh, in terms of Miami Hurricanes. I'm sure that, you know, I could. My friend is texting me right now. I'm so very sorry. Um, it's just because the table, I keep hearing it vibrate. Like, you know, sorry. Anyway, um, I, you know, could delve back and, like, comb through all of the rosters uh, for uh, years past. And it would take me maybe a little bit more because, again, I didn't grow up as a Miami Hurricanes fan. I don't have that 100% catalog of all the rosters and, okay, who was here and there and, you know, did, you know, and for a time, it was almost like, you know, how Tom Izzo could say at Michigan State, it, every four-year player went to a Final Four for the longest time until they missed it that one year. Uh, and it spanned, like, you know, 23 years of player when he took over for Judd Heathcote. So it's just like everybody at that program had been to a Final Four. So, yeah, but it's almost the same thing with Miami Hurricanes championships because – of the fact of how, you know, except for, you know, the 91 to 01 gap, um, they, they were overlapping. You know what I mean? So it's like, hey, I got one as a freshman, even though I wasn't a star player, but, you know, yada, yada. So, I mean, you'd really look maybe in that probation time or things like that. It would take me a little bit more to dive in. But, yeah, off the top of my head, I would say Edron James, Santana Moss, and Reggie Wayne. Do you have an idea there at State of the U, the demographics of your audience? Yeah. Yeah, we get demos. So, I mean, it's going to be, you know, males uh, 18 to 35 is going to be the main thing. Um, obviously, the geographic breakdown is uh, mainly Florida, but it extends out a little bit just because we have uh, Miami Hurricanes fans in lots of places. And since we have contributors um, in remote locations all over the country as well, so you have some pockets in other places, uh, you know, Atlanta, the uh, you know that North Central Georgia area is uh, is strong for us up in the North Carolinas. You know that kind of Tobacco Road area. We have uh, a good little bit um, randomly out in Utah and Idaho because Marshall lives out there and goes to school out there. Uh, our number two guy, so he, like there's a little footprint for that as well. So yeah, you know we uh, we we see those demographics and we 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 tap into those every once in a while. So considering that uh, most of us start watching sports near 10 years old you know the first memories are typically for i would guess the average male would be seven eight years old you remember latching onto a team so to remember the 1983 championship team you would have to be around 40 years old yeah you would have been mm -hmm. born sometime around you would have been born well 1980 older, you'd be older than that uh, yeah. so you'd have to be uh, maybe born around 1975 so you would be about um 45 years old. Yeah. Uh, and then the championships ensued from there, the, the big glut of them between 83 and 91. Mm -hmm. For considering your demographic, how knowledgeable do you think you are? They are, in addition to just knowing the years, you know, 83, 87, 89, you know, 91. I, that, I mean, I think that there's what happened. I think that there's a good little bit uh, of knowledge because, you know, I think that we are obsessive about it. So, you know, we can talk a lot about those championship years, maybe some of the in-betweens. Uh, we could all use some knowledge um, on, you know, just because, you know, we're going to focus on those ones that, you know, we won uh, and things like that. But that transitions me because last week you were asking me, you know, what's the best team not to win a championship? And that was actually our SB Nation network wide push for theme week this week. Um, and so we profiled five different years, uh, 86, 88, 92 uh 2000 and then that other one um and then i added in the 1996 baseball team uh just because they were one out away from winning the college world series and then warren morris happened um when i posted that uh you know the poll piece for people to go and vote on that there was a 
a couple of Hurricanes fans who said, hey, if you're going to mention the 96 baseball team, you got to mention 92. Um, you know, they got hosed because there was like uh, the semifinal game. Uh, it was raining and everything, and they were, you know, losing. And instead of suspending the game to come back and finish it the next day because of the TV time, you know, back in, you know, the early 90s, you weren't really going to move uh, the the television uh around you know the the broadcast of the national championship game so they you know basically were forced to play in adverse weather conditions um and then ended up losing that game but i think they went 53 and 10 that year and the 96 team went like 54 or 52 and 14 um the baseball teams that were um so yeah we we talked about uh, those and you know it was good to dive back into that so you know we had different contributors uh for the site uh, each take one season and kind of you know, just walk down memory lane, you know, uh, the highs, the lows, you know, uh, you know, the best players, what happened, and then, uh, you know, where it went wrong uh, for each season's uh, championship pursuit. So uh, I urge you to go check those out on stateoftheu.com. All of those pieces are still linked. Uh, they're right up on the front uh, homepage. And then you can go take a spin around uh, the, the super group and go see from all of our SB Nation blogs. So it was mainly quarterbacked by uh, the – the NBA um, league uh, of sites. So they took the lead on that. And uh, we all also tried to, you know, go in. Um, I just did it like a, a normal uh, theme week. So we had multiple pieces instead of just one listing all of them. You know, we gave homage to each of these seasons um, that, you know, Miami could have won a championship, but uh, came up short or were robbed for them. Um, and yeah, so you can uh, go check those out and it's a good conversation to have. And I think for me, it really did give me a uh, deeper knowledge of the 86, 88, and 92 seasons. Uh, I remember watching that Sugar Bowl against Alabama because I was, what, 12, 11 at the time? Because it was a 93 Super Bowl, uh, uh, Sugar Bowl. So, uh, yeah, that was 11 turning 12 that year. I remember watching that. And I was, like I told you guys, I was a Miami Hurricanes fan because of the baseball team. So when – you know, I was over at my dad's house and he puts on this game and I see, oh, it's the, oh yeah, no, that's my, that's my team. Yeah, yeah that's, that's the baseball squad. Like, sure, I'm going to go for them. I know those colors. And they ended up getting dump trucked. And I was just like, what happened? You know, and I remember having that memory, but I wasn't fully connected to that season. But then reading the piece that I forget who wrote it on our site. Uh, actually, I can go and tell you right now for the 92 season. do, 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 do. That was Justin Tatavio, um, who's been on here with you before. Um, he walked all the way through that, and I kind of got a, a, a more full picture of that non-championship season. So, uh, you know, even myself at 38 years old, and I'm as diehard a Hurricanes fan as anybody that you'll find, there was that gap of knowledge for me. Uh, so that helped to fill it in a little bit and kind of just remember that year past. And I hope that maybe, you know, our, our readership and our fan base does the same. It's kind of a narrative. What I remember from 1986 and 92 past specifics, I remember certain games and of course, remember the Fiesta Bowl against Penn State and remember the Sugar Bowl that you just mentioned against Alabama. I could tell you the score, basically what happened and what's remembered by most college football fans would be the interceptions from Benny Testaverde and then some. Wait, 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 wait. He just threw another one. Yeah. From 1986. Yes. Again. Yeah, I watched uh, an old college football game the other night uh, where a particular quarterback threw five interceptions, but it was more like, okay, I can understand that. I can understand that one, four out of the five. But yeah, Vinny just uh, gave them away. Those weren't like plays on the ball no. uh, that I remember for the most part. Uh, so that's that's what obviously comes to mind. But in both of those scenarios, and being a younger guy at that point, but still you know, I was watching football and watching a lot of it and fairly knowledgeable about how the game was played and so forth um, and having played in high school. But still, there is something I think that younger fans get lulled into a little bit more than those that have watched football for a long time. But you still see it now all the time. If there's a flashy team versus a lunch pail team and both of those teams in Penn State and Alabama were very much um, limited at quarterback, not real flashy there. I'm sure they turned out NFL wide receivers, especially that Alabama team, but 
not guys that were putting up numbers. So we didn't really know that they were that good. But basically, they're running the ball 75 to 80 percent of the time. And they're playing just really tough defense. Mm -hmm. And just because of the style of play, thinking they got no chance. They're playing this team that throws it all over the place, has all this speed, all this talent, which some of that is certainly true in comparing the two rosters, uh, but not giving credibility to the season put in by the other team just because of the style of play. And I think people still fall into that all the time. Totally. I mean, it's one that uh, it looks good versus it's effective. You know, it's form over fashion kind of a thing. Um, and yeah, you know, you have people who like, you know, when Paul Johnson was at Georgia tech, well, I love the triple option or, you know, the, the wishbone and da, 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 da. you like it because it's your team. It's like for me, because I don't know if you know, and I know that you do because of your professional uh, situation there, ESPN is airing the Michael Jordan six part documentary starting tomorrow. And I'm a huge Jordan fan. I remember all of those years, uh, you know, I kind of got. Uh, sentient to his career um, right the year after he broke his wrist um, and everything. So uh, I was there the whole entire time all the way through, but I grew up in Detroit. I'm a Pistons fan. I remember the bad boys. You know what I mean? And I remember when people talked about Michael Jordan like they did about LeBron when he couldn't win because Jordan couldn't get out of the first round for a long time. And then he got out of the first round and couldn't get past the Celtics. And then when the Celtics weren't there, he couldn't get past the Pistons because we whooped that ass. I remember those things. I also remember Bill Lane Beer. I love Bill Lane Beer. Seven feet tall, enforcer, rebounder, could stretch the floor, could do all of those things. And I love him for one reason and one reason only, because he was on my team. If he was on anybody else's team, I would hate him. And it's a similar kind of situation. Bill Lane Beer came from the Cleveland Cavaliers, where he was a complete unknown in regards to anybody outside of Cleveland. I grew up 45 minutes outside of mm -hmm. Cleveland, so I knew exactly who Bill Lane Beer was, but he was just a non-factor. He goes to the Pistons, finds his role, becomes a goon, but outside of that became a very, very good player, like a borderline right. Hall of Fame type player. He could score and rebound. He didn't just pick fights, but that's what he was known for. Uh, yeah, now, what, was, so, what was the original question? Because there was that was the parallel. Of, the original, I love. Go ahead. No, no, no. What was the question? Well, we were going with the championship. Who should have won championships? And then we were talking about teams. We were talking about the '86 and '92 teams of being. Um, and I want to clarify my take on this real quick for anybody in the live chat. I'm not saying Miami was all style and no substance. Those teams were tremendous. That. They were. They weren't like sometimes you'll see a Texas Tech or a Houston. Right that throws it all over the place and beats up on a lot of FCS and lower division teams. And then they run into somebody. And the team that comes to mind is the Houston team. Uh, one time, I believe with Andre Ware and definitely with David Klingler, that was like, I'm talking like they scored 95 points against somebody one time. Yeah. And then they ran into Miami on a Thursday night in Miami and got housed. And I saw right. it coming because yeah, they had some, they had some players, but they weren't like an NFL team. You know? Right. No, and, and that's what I meant about form over fashion. So, I mean, with form, for me, it was Lane Beer. You know, like, he was on my team. He did, like, it wasn't it wasn't flashy or anything, but I appreciated that. Just like these teams or these fans of, like, that Georgia Tech, that was the connection. Like, of the Georgia Tech wishbone and those things. It's like, it's not the greatest thing, but I love it because it's my team. It's who I root for, and that's what gives me the connection. Same thing like with me for Bill Lane Beer, where I know that everybody in the world hates Bill Lane Beer to this day. I know that he said something about LeBron James being better than Michael Jordan and the entirety of the city of Chicago. And look, both of my parents are, are native Chicagoans. I have family there, and they're hitting my phone up and everything. They're, I still hate Bill Lane Beer, and I know that you grew up in Detroit. And da -da 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 -da. Hey, okay, but that was my connection. I love it or I root for him. And I was happy to have him on our squad because I was a Pistons fan. But if I was anybody else, I would hate him. P.S. By the way, I don't know if I told it on here before, but I ran into Bill Lane Beer when I worked at Interlocking Arts Camp in northern Michigan at Interlocking Corners uh, grocery store. Wow. And it's this little mom and pop thing. And he's seven feet tall. Like it's Bill Lane Beer. Like, you know what I mean? Like you can't miss him. And like literally we were going to the beach on Lake Michigan. And I, I ran in real quick just for some brews or whatever uh, while everybody else was in the car. And I was just looking like, up because you know like i'm barely six feet tall and you know he's 6'11 i was just like 
Bill and Beer, and he was like, "Oh yeah, actually I am." So like we had a conversation. When he was checking out. He's like, "Cool, I'm gonna go hunting now." So take it easy. I'm like, "All right." Uh, so it was like a random time that I actually ran into Bill and Beer as well. So real life, personal life coming in with the the sports life and everything. So yeah, it is tremendous.